Have you ever wondered how to write a Hello World program and have it run without an operating system? Well, in this lecture, I'm going to show you just how to do that. So if we just head over to my computer. I'm going to create a new file called boot.asm. And essentially, we achieve this Hello World without an operating system by creating bootable code because bootable code doesn't need an operating system to run. After all, operating systems are bootable code. And we write bootable code by creating assembly language, which is a language designed for writing readable machine code. Inside our example, we're going to say bits 16. This signifies to our assembler that all output code should be 16 bit. Our assembler is responsible for assembling our assembly code, much like you would use a compiler to compile your Java code. With this completed, we're going to create a start label. Labels in assembly language are simply translated to addresses when your assembly code is assembled. Inside here, we're going to say move AH 0EH. This moves 0E hexadecimal into the AH register. Now, registers are simply temporary storage areas on your processor where you can store information temporarily. Think of it like variables, but they always exist and they can't store much. Next, we're going to set the AL register to a capital A. This will move a capital A into the AL register. Now we're going to call interrupt 0x10. So by invoking an interrupt, we cause a software interrupt handler to be executed, which can be thought of as a function in C. Now these interrupt handlers or functions typically don't take any arguments passed to them, not in the traditional function sense, but they are able to extract information to be able to perform their duties. In this particular case, we call interrupt 0x10, which will invoke the interrupt handler responsible for interrupt hexadecimal 10. This interrupt handler is registered in the BIOS basic input output system. The moment we call interrupt 0x10, that interrupt handler is invoked. The BIOS interrupt will see 0EH, 0E hex decimal in the AH register, and it will know that we're wanting to do a video routine. It will then extract the value from the AL register, and this is the character we want to write to the screen. The BIOS will then take charge and modify video memory to ensure the letter A is outputted to the screen. So unlike traditional programs where you will return from a function, our bootloader cannot return from anything. So we need to create an infinite loop. We do this by using JMP dollar sign, which means jump to self, essentially an infinite while loop. Now, finishing up this really simple program, we're going to say times 510 dash dollar dash dot dollar dollar db0. And what this command will do, it will instruct the assembler we need to pad 510 null bytes, but exclude any bytes that are already before it. So when our little assembler comes along and it assembles this assembly code, those bytes will be subtracted from the 510, and then whatever's left over will be padded with zeros. Finally, finishing up, we need our boot signature. The BIOS needs a boot signature so it knows how to boot your program. We can use 0xAA55. That is the boot signature the BIOS expects. So your total boot sector will be 512 bytes in size after this file has been assembled. The DW means make a word, which is 16 bits or two bytes. So this simple program will output A to the screen. 
and is a step towards a hello world that can be executed without an operating system. Let's now write and quit. We're now going to use NASM Assembler to assemble our bootloader. We're going to use dash F bin to say that this is a binary file. We do not want any headers. So we're not trying to create a Windows executable. We're not trying to create a Linux executable. We're trying to create raw bootable code. So dash F bin will ensure that a binary file is created. Binary file means that it's going to assemble the boot.sm file. The machine code generated will be wrote to the file with nothing else. An assembly language directly tolerates the instructions in a processor that run on the hardware. So everything you see in the bootloader is exactly in the processor's instruction set. Everything we, we do from moving values to registers are all CPU instructions built into the CPU hardware. So assembly language is very special. Now we're going to do dash O for the output file. And then we're going to do dot forward slash boot dot bin. Next, we're going to start our emulator, which will run this bootable code. We're going to do QMU dash system dash I386. And then we're going to say boot dot bin. I'm going to press enter. And you can literally see the letter A has been outputted on our virtual machine. Now you can actually boot this code on your real computer if you wanted to. And it would run without an operating system because it doesn't need an operating system. This is bootable code. This is as low as you can get. There's no file systems at this level. Files do not exist. You are writing code that talks directly to the processor. So now with the letter A written, let's finish that hello world. Closing QMU, we're going to reopen our boot sector. We're going to create a print routine. And we're just going to set up our segment registers. to point at the start of memory. And this is important because in 16-bit assembly code for Intel processors, we use the segmentation memory model, which essentially takes the segment register, multiplies it by 16, and then adds on an offset. And that's the absolute address of anything that we are trying to access in our 16-bit memory. Okay, we've set up enough segment registers to be able to continue. We need to now set up our stack pointer. We'll just move it to 0x8000 in memory so that it doesn't overwrite our bootloader when we are pushing and popping from our stack. Back to our print label, this will act as our print subroutine, which will be responsible for printing any message you send to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with ret, which means return from subroutine. Next, we're going to get rid of this code we wrote earlier. And we're just going to create a message under the jump called hello world. We're going to have a null terminator. We're now going to say move SI message. So we're moving SI, uh, we're moving message into the SI register, the address of message, not the message itself. And we will be using the LOD SB assembly instruction to assist us in creating our hello world function, our print function. And essentially what this is going to do, it's going to load the byte at the data segment register multiplied by 16 plus the SI register. Now in our case, the, IS, the SI register contains the address of message. So zero multiplied by 16 is zero. 
plus the offset of the address of message. That's what the SI is going to be equal to, the offset of message. And now what we can do is we can say call print. And now inside of our print subroutine, we can essentially extract the characters from that message. So how we do this is we say lod sb and remember the al register will now contain the character that we've loaded from the message so we need to check if it has a null terminator which is zero if it does have a null terminator we're done so we say jump equal dot done which will then return from the print subroutine otherwise what we're going to do is print out that character. So we're going to say move a h, zero e h, in it zero x ten. And we don't have any need to set the al register because lod sp did that. When we called lod sp, it loaded the character from the string, and then it incremented the si register. So we also don't need to worry about that. So now the message should be printed correctly. So we're going to create another label here called loop. And then we're just going to jump to it. Jump dot loop. And before I forget, we need to change the assembly origin to 0x7c00, which is the address in memory that the BIOS loads our bootloader at org 0x7c00 this will ensure the assembler will output any offsets to these labels we've made with the 0x7c00 added to it okay which is required because that's the address where our bootloader runs so with that all completed we can now assemble and execute this bootloader let's now assemble the bootloader and use the bin for the output. We're now gonna say qmu-system-i386 boot, and there we go, we see hello world. And that is how you make a hello world without an operating system. If this video really interests you, check the video description where you can find a complete course on kernel development, where you can learn how to build your very own multi-threaded kernel from scratch. I hope you enjoy watching this demonstration of how to create bootable code and write hello world without an operating system. Thanks so much for watching.